Exercise 20. This is another one that I've had to re-upload as a result of me not fully understanding the definitions. So, anyways, we want to prove this statement. So, let's write new as new r plus i new i, where new r and new i are real measures. Since nu is a positive measure, nu of x equals nu of x. Well, this implies that nu of x equals nu of r of x. Because it can't have any imaginary part, because then it wouldn't be positive. Also, for all e in m, See here. Yeah, let's put this in the line here. Nu of e is equal to what is this? Nu r of e plus i nu i of e. Come on, there we go. And this is what is this greater than or equal to? Well, we just use a triangle inequality to bring these outside, and we don't need to put absolute values because these are positive measures. And so, what does this imply? Well. Let's see here, we just subtract some stuff. We subtract the um, new i's here, and so we get new r e. By the way, why is this not like infinity minus infinity? That's because we're working with a complex measure and thus it's finite. And so we don't have to worry about that. So anyways, subtracting this is fine. And so new r of e is less than or equal to so value of new of e minus nu i e. But this is obviously going to be less than or equal to nu of e, which by, what is this? I think it's 13a. This is less than or equal to this. So then for all e and m, we have I'll put this one on the next line. I guess I guess this one could have eh, whatever. Formatting doesn't really matter. What matters is the actual math. And so we have new R of E. This is because every because the space is finite, we can write it as this. Because E is the same as X set minus E complement. Um, but what is this greater than or equal to? Well, we know that new R of X is equal to uh, total variation of new of x, and so that's an equals. But then we know that new r of e complement, if we were to put like an e complement here instead of e, because this thing holds for all subsets e, new r of e complement would be less than or equal to total variation of new of e complement. So if we flip the um, if we put minus signs, then we flip the order of the inequality, and so we get minus nu of e c. But now we can bring this together, and this is just total variation nu of e. Um, but what is this? We know that this must be greater than or equal to nu r of e by the same thing again that we proved before here, but now we're actually applying it to e. But look, we've got the same thing on both sides of this inequality. Thus, equality, equality holds throughout. So, nu of e equals nu r of e. And so basically, if Total variation nu of e is always equal to nu r of e. That's very quickly going to give us what we want. Um, first, we have to do a little bit of work. So now, note that nu r e, and I guess this is kind of a trick. If we look at this thing squared, then when we factor it out, we get nu r of e, this thing squared, plus nu i of e squared. And this is going to be, this is obviously greater than or equal to nu r of e squared. And so this inequality holds with the, um, if you take the square roots and so 
nu r of e is less than or equal to this thing, which is just nu of e. And then, so what else? But then we have this is less than or equal to nu of v by what we had before. No, 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 no. It's not what I want to say. What I want to say is this is equal to nu r of e. This is exactly what we just proved. But, and, and by just proved, I mean that's this result. But now by this result, this is less than or equal to nu of e. But then again, by proposition, what, 13.3a, I think it is, or 3. Point, chapter 3, no, whatever, that one proposition, you can find it. This is less than or equal to nu of e. So again, equality holds throughout. This means that nu r of e is equal to nu of e, um, but this is just nu r of e plus i nu i of e. But then this implies that nu i of e must be equal to zero because otherwise it would affect this value and it wouldn't hold that it could be equal to nu r of e. So anyways, um, this is zero, and then so nu of e equals nu r of e plus i nu i of e equals nu r of e because the imaginary part is zero, or the this thing is zero. But then this we, as we just proved, is equal to nu of e. Now we're done. This holds for all e and m, and hence nu is equal to nu, to a variation of nu. Now, there were a lot of times in this argument where I had to like say the same thing over and over again, so I wonder if this could be condensed a little bit, but in any case, at least we have a complete proof of this theorem or proposition, exercise, whatever. So even though it might not be the best proof, it still works and we're done.